Hey guys, this is Srini and in this video, let's have a quick look at scheduling learning rate during a neural network training process. And of course, for that, we are going to use Keras and TensorFlow. Now, first, before jumping into the code, let's have a quick look at what we mean by learning rate and what momentum is, right? I mean, let's remind ourselves what we are talking about and then let's jump into the code uh, to see how we can do it. Now, first of all, any machine learning Okay, any machine learning tries to minimize a loss function. There can be many different types of loss functions, right? I mean, for a linear regression, you have a, a mean squared error, for example. Whatever the loss function is, you're trying to minimize it. And in stochastic gradient descent, and most of these neural network-based ones, there are one variation or the other of the stochastic gradient descent, where you're trying to find this minimum of this loss function, and this is where the solution is. Now, how do you get there? Well, if you're right here, you want to take a step in the right direction and then another step and another step. Now, if these steps are too large, then you may miss this global minimum, right? So if the steps are too large, you'll go from here to there and then you go from here to there and you'll never find this minimum. Now, if the steps are too small, as shown in this example, you will definitely find uh, this minimum or a minimum and that will take a long time to get there. So what is the right way to do this? And one way that most of the time that we do is instead of defining the step size, we actually say, okay, initially take a large step, but as the epochs go, take smaller and smaller steps, right? So this can be a linear function, this can be uh, uh, an exponential function. In this example here, as the number of iterations or number of epochs go by, you're taking like linear steps and after some time, okay, you can just keep the same uh, learning rate because it's small enough and you're just trying to find this minimum. Now, one other thing I should mention here is, uh, I since I mentioned momentum here, if you have your uh, space, you know, loss function uh, with, with this type of weird shape, and most of them are, then uh, you will find this uh, pseudo minimum and not the global minimum right here, right? This minimum. Now, to be able to push beyond this and then find this, this is what we define as momentum and which is one of the hyperparameters that you can provide as part of stochastic gradient descent. So you're taking these loss function is the steps and then momentum is, uh, uh, do I push over this and go uh, so you can find the global minimum, right? So by default stochastic gradient descent, I believe the momentum is set to zero. Okay, so the steps here can be linear, okay, uh, meaning, gradually decrease this in a linear way and then just keep constant or it can be an exponential function. So in this exercise, I'm gonna show you how to do exponential but linear, I'll give you the equation and you can do it yourself. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump into the code now. Okay, so here we have the code and I added enough annotations, you know, so you can go through, uh, you know, the text at your own pace. But for now, please focus on uh, the video. Please focus on this text. And down below in the description, you'll find link to my GitHub repo so you can download all the code uh, for all the videos that I have done. Okay, so uh, the way we do this is basically, long story short, we are going to use callbacks to define, first of all, define a function for whatever the, the loss function is, uh, uh, you know, for whatever the step size is. Uh, in this case, like I said, we are going to do use exponential and then uh, use callbacks to kind of include that as part of your training. That's it. Now you can go and not watch this video unless you want to learn a bit more. Okay, so for this, let's use the MNIST dataset because it's easy and all of you can access it, so I don't have to use any special data sets uh, here. So I'm going to import the regular libraries right there, right? I'm importing TensorFlow, Keras, and from layers, dense, and uh, uh, dropout, and sequential method, so we can put together our model. And from the callbacks, I'm going to, this is important, from keras.callbacks, import learning rate scheduler. This is the one that kind of helps us uh, achieve the task today, okay? It's from callbacks. import learning rate scheduler. Okay, that's what this is. Okay, so let's go ahead and import that and of course import numpy and matplotlib so we can go ahead and plot it. I plan on including these two lines from now on in my video so you know exactly what version I'm using so you know where it should definitely work. So I'm testing this on TensorFlow 2.2 and Keras 2.4.3. Okay, now the next step uh, is random seed. I'm setting it to some constant value. For this exercise, it's not 
going to the, uh, make that big of a difference. The reason I have this is uh, starting the next video, I'm going to show you, talk about how to tune hyperparameters. So for that, when you test different parameters, it makes sense to keep the seed the constant so you kind of can compare the values. So this is optional, but let's go ahead and do that. And you know how we can get uh, MNIST, right? So from keras.datasets.mnist, go ahead and get that data set and uh, now we are going to load this data set and uh, we have x train y train x test y test so with a single line you can basically get this uh, uh, get this data now the train has 60,000 images and each image is 28 by 28 pixels and uh, the testing I believe has 10,000 images. Okay, now let's go ahead and plot a few of these so you know exactly what I'm talking about in case you haven't seen MNIST before. I'd be super shocked if you haven't seen them before and watching this video. It says PLT is not defined because I thought I ran this line, but apparently I did not. Let's go ahead and run these lines one more time just to make sure we have everything. Okay, so now let's go ahead and plot. Okay, so in my system, the plots are up here. So this is this is how it looks like. Okay, I did a few plots in the past, but these are the numbers and we are just trying to classify it. As soon as the number comes in, what is it, right? So uh, detecting handwritten digits. Okay, so now let's get back. So far, I hope you guys know what these are. And our numbers are all unsigned integer eight. They go from zero to 255. Let's go ahead and normalize them. Well, in this case, I'm just scaling them to uh, values uh, between zero to one, okay? So uh, dividing by 255. And let me go ahead and reshape them because, uh, of course, you can go ahead and put together a few convolutional layers and then dense layers to do this. That's the right way to do it. But I don't want to waste your time by kind of showing all those, uh, you know, uh, all those steps here, which takes time to train. I want the training to go faster. Uh, that's why I'm just uh, I'm just reshaping it. In fact, I should have taken a subset of these images, but that's fine. Let's go ahead and reshape them into 1D uh, so we can actually use only the dense layers. Again, remember, dense layers only works with one-dimensional vectors. Up to that point, you can do two-dimensional uh, you know, convolutional layers. It's up to you if you're working with images. And this should work fine even with one-dimensional vectors. Okay, so now let's go ahead and convert our Y values to categorical because again, this is a classification problem and the uh, convert them into categorical please watch my video on this topic so instead of 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 we are just doing 0 is all zeros except for uh, 1 at a value of 0 this is one hot encoded again watch that video i don't want to derail this topic now uh, i'm defining number of epochs as uh, 50 for now uh, so we can see how the effect is uh, uh, up to 50 epochs. It's going to be slow later on, so I'll pause the video, but not slow for you guys, slow for me. So number of epochs 50, let's set a learning rate of 0 0.1. That's it, okay? We are fixing the learning rate of 0 0.1. That's where it starts, okay? So far, I'm not talking about scheduling this yet. We'll get there in a second. And decay rate is how do you want to change this? Again, remember, initially you have a step of 0.1, but then how do you want to decay it? In this example, I'm just taking my initial learning rate and dividing by number of epochs. So initially it's 0.1, and after uh, two epochs, it's 0.1 over two, like 0 0.05, and then so on. So that's how it's actually going as I'm defining here. Okay, and this is all handled in the straight, straightforward way, no, nothing tricky. Momentum 0.8 because I'm pushing it to find the global minimum, okay? So I'm defining my momentum to be 0.8. All of those are parameters that goes into the stochastic gradient descent here. That's the uh, function I'm going to use right here as an optimizer. Sorry, not function, but that's, uh, uh, that's the optimizer I'm going to use. And uh, that takes uh, the parameters learning rate, so 0 0.1, momentum, 0 0.8, and decay rate is uh, 0.1 over number of epochs. And uh, there will be another parameter called Nesterov false. And did I write notes? Yeah, Nesterov, it's also another term of momentum. So if you don't want to use the regular momentum, you can use this different, but right now we are setting it to false. So this is SGD or stochastic gradient descent that we are going to use. What did it say? Name, decay rate. Uh, again, I have a 
habit of not running everything. So let's go ahead and do that. And now let's run this. Okay, so now we have our stochastic gradient descent defined. Now let's go ahead and define the model. For that model, I need to provide the input shape. So our input shape is basically 28, right? So input dimension, what is our input dimension? Is uh, 784, yeah, sorry, not 28, 28 by 28. So that's my input shape. And then I'm just defining a dense layer of 64 uh, neurons and then a dropout layer and then dense. I'll do a video on how to tune your uh, hyperparameters to find the best dropout and best number of neurons, okay? So please stay tuned and subscribe to my channel to find these out. But this is basically pretty much the standard so far. Again, until now, I promised you to, uh, you know, to talk about scheduling this learning rate, but I'm not doing it yet. So uh, uh, we'll get there soon. Okay, so so far everything pretty much the straight. If you have never done this before, uh, doing MNIST, this there you go. Now you know. Okay, so I defined this as a function because I can call this multiple times later on because I want to do both uh, with. Uh, scheduler without scheduler at the same time so we can look at the results okay so uh, my model is defined as a function so I am defining my model as calling this function so that's the model and how does the model look like there you go again uh, so far I, I hope no surprises for you and I won't be surprised if many of you forwarded this video but that's a bad idea because I forwarded enough videos to know that the key gold nugget I really was looking for, I forwarded through, so <laughs> my personal experience. Okay, bat size list defined to 64, and this is basically uh, fitting the model, right? I mean, uh, model.fit, and you go ahead and do this. Let's not do that yet, because that takes time. Now let me show you the actual custom learning rate, the guys that, uh, I mean, the reason you tuned in for. So custom learning rate, like if you want to do time-based decay, Okay, so you can basically define this as, okay, my learning rate is one over one plus DK times uh, iterations. Okay, so you can use this. If you want to do uh, uh, step DK, you can just go ahead and do this. I gave the function right here, so you can go ahead and use this step DK, uh, you know, where it's stepwise decreasing. And finally, the one I'm going to demonstrate right now is exponential DK, which as the name suggests, you know, I don't know, uh, if you come from physics background, you, you saw this exponential DK, alpha particle DK, not a physicist, well, fine. Exponential decay is basically you have an uh, initial intensity, initial value, which is our learning rate, which we defined as point, point 0.01 or whatever that value is. And then multiplied by exponential e to the power of minus kt, right? This is not Boltzmann constant. This is, uh, again, I go back to my physics roots, but this k is a hyperparameter we are trying to tune. Okay, and, uh, uh, and t right there, which is, uh, time or epoch or number of iterations if you want to call it. So how do we define that? Well, first of all, let's define our uh, a new model called exponential model, which is basically the same model that I defined here. That's the reason I defined a function, okay? So let's go ahead and run this line and print the model. This is exactly the same as before, yeah? I just gave it a different name because I can train both, okay? Now, here is the function. My exponential deep dk function takes in an argument of epoch because it needs to know number of epochs, which is t in the equation, okay? And then multiplied by k, k is the decay rate right there, okay? And this initial uh, LR is your learning rate, okay? So the function is basically my new learning rate equals to the old learning rate multiplied by e to the power of minus decay rate times epoch, one line, that's it. So this is the function that we defined right there, okay? And then comes how do we uh, use it as part of the training. This is pretty easy. You just define your uh, learning rate uh, scheduler, okay? So remember the re learning rate scheduler that we just imported. So this is my learning rate. So this schedules the learning rate, okay? Using the function called exponential decay because this needs to be a function, okay, that we are calling here. So my LR rate is this. And now, just define a callback. And this is very similar to the callbacks that you use, like whether you're doing uh, early stopping or tensor board or any of the other callbacks. This is pretty much a callback that we put as part of our model.fit. Okay, so there you go. That's the learning rate, callbacks, and then your callbacks, just go ahead and give the list right there and you're all set. And this part is just uh, pl uh, plotting the 
model without this exponential and this with exponential. So this is the entire code. Let's go ahead and run this. I'll pause this video. Uh, so at the end of this, let's delete all variables so we don't confuse anything with anything. And at the end of this, let's just look how things behaved, uh, you know, between these two. Okay, so let me pause this and let's continue this uh, in a few seconds actually. Okay, so finally done. So let's go ahead and have a look at the plots. And this is the one without our exponential. Doesn't look that bad actually. I mean, you can see the validation right there and you can see the our training going down right here. And here is the accuracy for the same, okay? And I hope we get much better stability with the other one. So here, yeah, you can see less bumpy and everything with the exponential. And uh, here is the accuracy right there. I bet all of you prefer to see something like this. Yeah, very nice. And uh, this is not bad, but as you can see, still bumpy over there. And again, this is just this example. In real, again, test it out on other examples, but now you know how to implement this, uh, uh, you know, this, this your custom loss function as a fun uh, you know, as a function and then import it or use it as part of your training using the callbacks. So thank you very much. And in the next upcoming tutorials, I'm going to talk about hyperparameter tuning. So please stay tuned to this channel. No pun intended there. And thank you very much. Please subscribe to this channel. Thank you.